Hi and welcome back to the course on network security and penetration testing. As you know that we are covering a course where we are trying to learn that what is penetration testing. This is an academic course and whatever we are doing in this course is purely for academic purposes. Now today in uh, the lab exercises uh, for network security and penetration testing, we'll be using Nmap. As you can see, I have installed it on a Windows machine. Now Nmap is an open source uh, software or a utility for network discovery and security auditing, or we can use it for vulnerability assessment as well in any organization. It tells us about the overall uh, setup of your organization and the weaknesses of the system. So uh, we can take be better measures in order to protect our environment. Now you can see that I have installed Zenmap. If you want to install it on your computer, you can go to uh, nmap.org and then you can click on this nmap 7.9 to setup utility and you'll be able to install it on Windows platform. Now, if you are using Kali Linux, it comes in pre-installed. You can use it over there as well. But since most of the guys are using Windows based operating systems, so we are covering these exercises today, basic exercises of Nmap on a Windows based machine. Now, there are lots of commands that we use in uh, our Nmap. As you can see, it's appearing as nmap minus T4 minus A and then V. So what does that mean actually? If you want to understand it, you can Google uh, nmap cheat sheet and you'll get all the basic specifications of what are different commands and uh, what they are used for. Now we'll be using some of these commands uh, for our exercises today. And we'll explain that what actually these commands are doing if uh, we want to check the vulnerabilities in our systems. Now, before we start, let me show you that the system we are using for our exercises today is a Windows 7 machine where I have disabled the firewall and there is no antivirus installed on this machine. In fact, I have installed defreeze because it would be used with the students in an academic environment. So we want to make sure that any changes made on this computer are reverted back once the system restarts. So you can check the details about defreeze and Pharaonic software. It's an evaluation copy, which is good for 30 days. So it would help us in doing our basic exercises today. Now let's start. As you can see, this is the basic interface of ZenMap software. Once it's installed on your Windows machine, you can type in ZenMap and you'll be able to see the shortcut of it. That's the basic interface of it, where uh, we can see the host, we can see the services, and once we complete our scans, you'll be able to get details about the ports, topology, and host details and scans, etc. You can save the scans as well so that you can check them later, their output and stuff like that. Now you can select a profile that how intense you want to scan the network. There are different modes in it. For example, intense scan plus UDP, TCP ports, intense scan with no ping, ping scan and so on. So we'll keep the default settings as it is. Uh, the IP address that we will be using today for our lab exercises is a uh, Windows 7 machine as I told you. So uh, we'll be running our first command uh, we'll type in the command as you can see the remote target on which we want to scan is 192.168.0.156 which is our windows 7 machine now nmap is uh, the syntax how we write it minus o would detect the operating system uh, and it's used for operating system detection using the tcp ip stack fingerprint minus v is the verbosity of it like how intense we want to scan it and once we'll scan it, we'll be able to get some details about the operating system. So for that, we'll write this address over here and we'll press scan. Now you can see these bars are moving. It means that it's trying to get some details about the remote host and it's checking for all the ports which are open, but uh, we are checking only for thousand ports. So it is checking and telling us that how many ports are open on this specific machine. Now you can see the details of it that uh, it's an ARP ping uh, scan started on a date and then DNS resolution was found at this. And then you can find the discovered ports which are open at these ports, specific ports. It's giving you exactly the details of it. 
Then it's giving you the IP address of it. Further, it's telling you the ports which are actually open. Now you can see that there are some ports open over here, but they might not be listening on these ports. But these are the ports which are actually listening and that's why they are appearing in green. And you can check all these ports which are open on this machine. Further, it's giving us the MAC address of the machine. We are using a TP-Link wireless adapter on this one. Then it's showing that it's Windows 7 and operating system, other relevant details of it. So that's the basic information about the remote target machine. Okay, the next command we'll be using over here will be it's the same uh, command with minor differences in it that before we used nmap minus o to detect the operating system and we have the verbosity on it. Now we want to know the service values as well, any yani versions of it which services are running on it with the operating system and we'll keep the verbosity as it is and we'll press scan. Now, as you can see, we have the results for the scan. It's giving us the ARP scan results. Then it has discovered the open ports. Further, it got some detailed information about the host and then the ports with the services which are running on, these, on this machine. Now, as you can see, it's telling us exactly that it's Windows 7. And then these are the ports and what's the functionality of those ports. Plus, it's giving the operating system details over here. Now mind it that we didn't penetrate in the machine so far. That's how the hackers try to gather information about your machines on the network. So by looking at this, you must make sure that if any of these services are not required in your organization, you must uh, take uh, appropriate measures in order to close the ports or to take care of them. Now, as you know that penetration testing steps involve the information gathering, scanning and footprinting and vulnerability scanning. So we are on the stage number three. In our next exercises, we'll be going to exploitation, privilege escalation, and then it would go to pivoting and persistency and reporting. So this is, this is the sequence of it, how we perform these scans and how we follow the penetration testing on computers. Now the next command that we are going to use is nmap minus a and the host address. Now minus a is uh, the uh, command that we use in order to uh, detect the operating system version uh, by script scanning and trace route. It's considered to be more aggressive scan as compared to the other scans. Now whenever we are doing any kind of penetration testing, you'll have to be uh, as silent and quiet as possible, your command should not create a lot of noise on the network. A lot of noise means that if it's too noisy and it is uh, uh, trying to get the results in a very aggressive way, your intrusion detection systems or the firewalls would detect it and it would send an alarm to the um, information security guys that something's happening. So the main purpose behind the uh, guys who are hacking the network is they want to be as silent as possible and they do all these exercises without leaving any footprints behind. So uh, minus A is not considered to be a very good command for the hackers who are trying to get the information of the systems, but uh, it gives us really detailed results about the target machine. So let's start it. Press scan. As you can see, we have detailed report on the uh, operating system and the ports which are open on this computer. Uh, so it shows that 990 port is closed for TCP reset. And then we have the open ports and their services. Further, if you will move down, it's giving the target name of the computer, uh, plus the MAC address of the machine and the details about the uh, operating system date and time, SSL certificates, validity of the certificate uh, date and time and the expiry date of it. Then it has the information about the ports and uh, what are the services and versions which are running on those ports. Uh, again, we have the MAC address of it, uh, operating system details, and then it has the details of the whole scripts uh, on it where uh, we can actually see that it's running SMB2 and security mode which is account uh, used as guest in order to get the information about it and the operating system details with the uh, domain and rest of the things. Uh, so quite detailed report over here. 
Now the next command we are going to use is minus ss. It is a default sin port scan. We call it a stealth mode scan as well or half mode or half scan as well. Now we have uh, SV where we want to get the information about the service values. So let's see the output of it. Now, as you can see, it gave us the ports which are open with the service name and the version. So that's what this command is doing with SS and SV that we can get all the details about the open ports, the services running on it and the version of those services. Now the next command is really powerful as you can see that I am using minus minus script and then vulnerability scan on a target machine. Now one of the greatest features of Nmap is uh, Nmap, Nmap scripting engine which we call it as NSE. The scripting engine allows the user to use a predefined set of scripts which we can write using a Lua language, a Lua programming language. Now using the Nmap scripts is uh, crucial in order to automate the system and vulnerability scans etc. For example, if you want to run a full vulnerability test against your target machine, you can use these parameters as minus minus script vulnerability and then on the target machine. So it would scan against the uh, um, uh, Nmap scripting engine that what are the vulnerabilities on our target machine. So let's scan and find it out. As you can see, it showed us some really interesting results over here. As you can see that it has identified the CVE and then there is a code appearing for that, which is a vulnerability on this system. And then there are services as well as the ports which are open on this machine. Further, it's getting the cipher suite of it, module type, and then it's getting two other uh, vulnerabilities, uh, one other vulnerability on the system, which is CVE 2009 and 3103. I'll explain it in a minute, but let's try to understand that there are three states of the results over here. One is open, uh, sometimes it appears as closed or filtered. Now, when we say that it's open, it means that the application is actively accepting the TCP connections, UDP diagrams or SCTP association on this port. Now, that gives us an idea that this is an open port um, and it's an uh, open venue for the attackers to penetrate in the system. Uh, when it's appearing as a closed port, it means that the closed port is accessible. It receives and responds to Nmap Pro packets, but there is no application listening on it so they cannot do anything uh, about it uh, there is another uh, function or another um, status of it which appears as filtered now nmap cannot determine whether the port is open because the packets are filters preventing the probe in reaching the port now this is uh, this could be possible because of an active firewall or anything like that but that really uh, frustrates the attackers because they don't know that actually what's there on the system whether it's active or not whether it's accepting the connections or not and all those basic details so once we have the cve uh, results over here um, we need to find that information that what does it stand for and for that we have national vulnerability database and if you'll search for it you'll get the exact details and uh, um, about that vulnerability that what is it how severe is it and uh, uh, what are the impacts of it uh, so you can find some information about it on uh, nist website and for the other one as well you can see that there are some advisories on it and it was exploited and these are the relevant details of it now what hackers or uh, the persons who are trying to gain access to your system what they do is they get these details then using uh, Kali Linux they'll use meta exploit and then they'll they'll use a payload against or uh, which is matching this severity code to launch an attack against the machines so that would be in our later exercises but uh, that's what CVE is and we can get some detailed information about it. Now, likewise, uh, before we were checking the vulnerability on our target machine, now we want to use the script again in order to get the details if our uh, remote host has any malwares installed on it. Since it's a freshly installed machine, let's see uh, what we'll get in the results. As you can see that uh, there are no details on anything related to that over here. It's showing only the ports which are open 
and it did not identify any malwares on this machine. Now next command is a very simple command in order to get the details of the open ports on a remote host. I am just using Google as an example uh, to check which ports are open on our remote target. I am expecting only two ports which should be open which is port 80 and 443 because it's a web server from Google uh, through which we are getting the uh, or accessing the website. As you can see that only port 80 and 443 are open because it's a web server it's listening to these ports and it's able to communicate on that now if you are searching a remote machine for example our target host we'll be doing it in a while uh, it distinguishes that if a computer is listening on port 80 and 443 it means that maybe IAS is installed on it or it's a web server so our next command would be specifically in a silent mode half scan and uh, we'll be using minus p for the port we are using port on our target machine and we'll try to scan that if port 80 is active on that and as you can see that port 80 is closed on our remote machine it means that we are not running iis which is a internet information server in order to host applications uh, it's closed so it's not a web server now if we want to search a number of ports for example which are quite known uh, like 21 22 25 80 110 and so on on our remote host and we want to get the service values about it as well so we'll write it in this way and we'll scan if we can get any results on it now, as you can see, it gave us the results like port 21 is FTP, which is closed on this machine. Uh, port 22 is for SSH, which is closed as well. Port number 25, 110 and 143 as they are related to SMTP, POP3 and IMAP. We know that it's not an exchange server. So all these ports are closed on this machine. Port 80, we checked it already. The only port which is open on this one is port 445. Now we'll try to find out in our command in next command is that we want to check the top ports top 20 ports which are open on this computer on our remote host. So we are writing minus minus top and then we are writing ports like 20 if you want to reduce or increase the number of ports you can change this number 20 to something else. As you can see, it's showing us the ports and their state, all the main ports, the ports which are open and closed, so we can get a complete information about the open and closed ports from here. So these are the basic exercises for NMAP. I'll try to post all of these commands in the description of the video. So that's it for today. Thank you very much.